Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Penny and I'm coming to you today from Northern Ontario, Canada. It's been a couple weeks again since my last video. Things here have been going well. A little bit busy, but other than that, everything's fine. I'm excited. I'm awaiting a spin right order. They had a tent sale, an online tent sale, and I participated with that, so that was exciting. Still haven't got the online shopping thing down yet, but it's it's coming. So I went to Barry last week, and that was part of the reason I didn't make a video last week was it was a big ordeal. Went to Barry, had my medication administered, stayed there for six hours just off of the emergency waiting emergency department. While I was there, I met a really nice nurse named Gail. Hi, Gail. I was trying to keep myself busy, so I have a to-go bag that I carry with me. It's got a couple crochet hooks, a couple knit needles, scissors, darning needle, you know, your basic measuring tape, a few odd balls of wool. So I got down there and I pull, opened up my bag, because that's the first thing I do in, in any situation, is open up my crochet bag. And I was like, oh, no. The 15 baby hats that were washed, ready to go to Royal Victoria Hospital, were sitting on my sofa at home. While I was there, I did manage to make a couple of um, baby hats. Um, they're just double crochet, front and back post brim. You know, this one here. I changed my stitch count instead of having 48, I had 44. It's a bit smaller, but it's still, babies have different sized heads, so I'm sure it'll still work. And then this one here, I just used the, um, the front post instead of doing the front post, back post. It puts this like little ridges on the inside, and I'm not sure if that's going to be really comfortable for baby, but so that's 31, 32, and 33. Not sure when I'm gonna get the baby hats there. My daughter has to go to Aurelia next week, so hopefully she will take them the rest of the way to Barry. So while I was sitting there, crocheted a few baby hats. I because it's right next to the emergency department, you're getting to hear a few things that are happening, like broken legs and stuff, and that's not so it's trying to keep myself entertained. There's a TV, of course, but I don't watch TV. So I wanted something that was a bit more thought process. And I've been knitting dishcloths lately. And Debbie the Canadian Crotcheter knit a dishcloth. And um, some people could be offended by what it said on it. So I was thinking about that myself, thinking, well, if I, if I knit this dishcloth, this is the first one here. Well, the first one actually Gail has. Um, I'll just quickly. Okay. So, um, Gail has one identical to this. She loved the color. So, throughout the course of the day, I was working on it and not working on it and working on it and not working on it. And she kept saying how beautiful the color was. And so, I said to her at the end of the day when I was getting ready to leave, I said to her, do you really like the color of this dishcloth? And she said, yes. And I said, do you realize what it says? And she's like, it says, she goes, I thought it was just a pattern. So I laid it out flat and showed her, you know, the F and the 2020 and stuff. And she was like, oh, and she thought it was hysterically funny. Her daughter would love it. And I said to her, well, you can have it. You've been very nice to me and I have no problem giving it to you. And anyhow, so she did take it. She's giving it to her daughter, uh, Gail. I hope your daughter enjoyed it. Um, wonderful nurse, wonderful nurse. Um, so anyhow, after I got home, I made another one and my grandson said, grandma, why does that dishcloth have a bad word on it? He's so got thinking, how can I make them without them being so obvious? So I used variegated or spotty wool and this one, you, I think I have it upside down right now, actually. Um, you can tell texturally, but it's really hard to see. Um, so I knit a dishcloth. I have a pattern. This is the pattern. I will link it below. This is grandma's favorite dishcloth. I've knit this before. It didn't come out this small before. I followed the pattern exactly. Um, it's a bit small for 
my people, the, like the people that I make dish cloths for. So I'm going to probably donate that to um, Women's Shelter or something like that. And then because I was in a dish cloth type mood and the bingo square said create three dish cloths. So I created another one. This is just a double crochet back and forth with a single crochet border. No pattern, just my own pattern. So I was like, oh, cotton, me and cotton. I got lots of cotton and I love the Karen cotton cake. So I've bought more of them. So uh, I mean, I need to be using some of my cotton, but I did make another one of these. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen um, Lisa when she got her gift from me um, for my 100 subscriber giveaway. I had made her one of these type scarves. They go on like this to be, it's a Nastasia pattern. I'll also link it below. So it's just a little spring scarf. Lots of people are liking these. I've made eight or nine of them now so far, and I only have two for myself. I do have three. I might have three. I think I have one in every colorway I've used so far. Anyhow, I made this one for my friend Julie Wilchris that, that won that won the 100 subscriber giveaway first. I just thought it was, it might look bad if someone found out that she actually, I know her in real life and somebody might think it was a fixed rigged thing or something. So I did make this for Julie. I also have a notion pouch for Julie. Uh, it's not quite as funny as Lisa's, but um, it's, I, and um, because I was in Barrie and at the hospital, <clears throat> I had to have the mask on if I left my little cubicle. But I didn't have to have the mask on if I was in my cubicle or outside or, you know, like it was, the mask was on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. And I kept taking it off and folding it in half because I didn't want to keep wasting a mask every time I did that. And it's my germs. And if you set the mask down on a table, it's the table germs on it then. Or, and I was like, mm. so I kept the mask hooked on one ear, which one really big, ugly mask earring. And because I, I don't like, it's hot breathing in them and stuff. And I don't know how people do it. I medically probably could get out of wearing one, but my doctor's thought is if someone sneezes and you have a mask on, there's still some type of protection between you if they did have something. So she said, if you can wear one, wear one. So I've been really trying to wear one. So I made myself just a little necklace. It goes around my neck and it clips onto the mask. Well, wasn't this a very beautiful interruption? Back to these. It's just a cotton, it's soft. It's a Karen cotton cake. It's the remnants of my salt and pepper, cracked pepper, maybe. Um, goes around your neck. And then when you go to put your mask on, hangs here, dangles around, doesn't interfere. I think if you were wearing big earrings or something, it might interfere. And then when you're done with your mask for that particular moment, you can just sort of tuck it in half. Now, if you're eating, things might get in there or something, but I thought this is fantastic because I can on and off really quite simply. So I made myself one. And then my daughter said to me, we were talking at a campfire. We had a campfire a week or so ago. We had a campfire a week ago and she asked me about making one. And I was like, how can I make that? I got those. I bought these clips for backpack buddies. So I was like, I got those clips. How could that work? So that's how this came to be. Um, this is no pattern. This is just my own measurements. I have a hook. I'm not even sure what size it is. It's like a two or 2.5, 2.75. Like it's, it's less than a three. I know that because I wanted it to be kind of tight but not, not, not thick and hot. So that's the, that's the first one I made. So I posted pictures and several friends came and several friends messaged and ordered them. So I 
sold, I don't know, eight or nine now, and I got another 10, 12 to make. Busy making these. Well, and I told them, no color control here. It's whatever the Karen cake gives me is what I've got. Of course, boys could pick more beige gray ones, and the girls can deal with the teal. So then my daughter says to me, well, can you make them for the kids? And I was like, sure, I'll just make them shorter. And then I started thinking about it, and no, I I don't want to put something like that around my, my six-year-old granddaughter's neck. Like, what if she got hooked on something? Like, it's quite possible. So I decided to tear apart a lanyard I had and make this. So if she gets caught on something, it's going to pop apart because it's that breakaway safety feature. This one is actually for my grandson. He's 10. Um, probably could handle the choking aspect for himself. But he's still a kid and I want to put it on there. So I tried to find some and the only ones I could find were the ones that you push the button to, op like to open and I want the just pull. So I ordered some from the Amazon. I hopefully they will be here. They're coming September 1st. So I'm making this portion because this is so anon. I couldn't crochet. I crocheted onto here, but I can't really crochet onto there because that's pretty thin. My needle won't fit. So, yeah. So I've been making halves of these. I ordered some more of these from Amazon. They're supposed to also be in September 1st. So I imagine next week will be lanyard week. I really wasn't planning on becoming a lanyard builder. But the hardware on them, like the hardware on, on this, is it's $2 worth of hardware. By the time you figure out these are... 55 cents a piece without adding the taxes and stuff and these are about a buck a piece so I'm, I'm having to charge a little bit for them because you know two bucks everybody wants them for their grandkids back to the jada and stitches well i have sewn on my sunflowers and my pumpkins and ta -da, my little scarecrow I love him I think he's fantastic uh, he fills in a nice spot between the two of them and then I have another horse and a couple of round bales of hay to sew into this area and then I'm at a border next week you will see this with a border on Maybe even a backing. Um, I'm so done with it. My, my granddaughter asked me if I could make her a unicorn blanket. And then she had a picture of one. And it's unicorn squares. Granny squares. Which I am love to make for her. But they're all applique. So I told her not right now. She wants a, a sweater. So she's getting a sweater. I'm going to make a unicorn applique for the sweater and put it on, but I don't think I have a blanket in me full of appliques right now. I love Jada. She is it's fantastic, but the sewing aspect of this is been a bit much. Um, another thing with the kids going back to school, I wanted them to be able to have access to hand sanitizer. The school board is putting hand sanitizing stations in at the school. Um, I think they're doing a really uh, quite a good job. I'm excited about the school year. I'm trying to be positive and, and think good things. It's going to be an amazing, fun, wonderful year. It's possible, right? Even though things are going to be different, that doesn't mean they're going to be bad. So I made this for my grandson because he's, he's a messy one. And... It's just a little monster type thing. And it's got a button back here. And the hand sanitizer just, that's the sanitizer that I could find. Um, however, the school is going to have hand sanitizing stations. So he won't be needing this. So it probably will get hooked to my purse. I don't care if it's a monster. That's one thing that I made. Um, I did make 
three happy faces for National Crochet Day. Um, you know, a random act of crochet kindness. I, I joined that face group. I put out three. I only had time to do three. Um, the mister and I had fun going around. I have a couple of pictures of, of them that I took, um, different places that we placed them. We didn't hide them too hard because we wanted, you know, people to be able to find them. And it's been a lot of rain lately, so. It got me thinking about backpack buddies again, and I have all these clips, so I made a few teddy bear backpack buddies. Um, we don't have a lot of places to shop here, so you're going to Walmart to buy your kid's school bag. Chances are another child in the class is going to have the exact same school bag, and I, I can put... Um, names on my grandchildren's stuff because I have a, a cricket but um not everyone can so if you have a Barbie backpack like three other people in your class and you have a teddy bear attached to yours you know which one's yours so these have been quite popular in the past lots of friends like them for their grandchildren so I've got three of those made I'm attempting to deal with darker scraps because I have a lot of dark scraps left. So I think it, they're going to turn into things like backpack buddies. Um, I want to make a couple of those frontline bears. And I think I'm going to make a dark frontline bear. Just to get rid of some of my smaller scraps that are black and brown. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a black bear. These don't have safety eyes. I haven't looked online to buy... A, the, the seven mil safety eyes but that's something that I'm gonna look into but with lanyards going crazy right now that's what I'm going to be working on I think that's everything that I have finished I of course have a few works in progress again I started working on a dark brown and beige um, blanket for hospice um, it's super saver brown wool and beige wool. I found it in a tote downstairs. There's a couple of balls of it. So definitely enough to make at least one full sized blanket for hospice. That's it. Um, I want to thank all of you for viewing. I want to thank all of you for stopping at my channel and taking the time to spend it with me today. All right. Thanks for watching and have a great day.